Hello there Reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be looking at Pattern Mutator. Now this isn't going to be my typical overview of looking at a device. Um, there's been so much chatter obviously in all, all the forums about Pattern Mutator that I thought I will actually have a look at it myself. I did see a video recently and I wasn't that impressed by it. The end result, what the guy was doing, obviously a lovely ambient piece, was brilliant but I just felt well we can achieve that ourselves. So this is going to be a real kind of techie and I'm going to be really concentrating on these obviously five knobs. Exactly what are they really doing to this mutation? Because that's the whole point of this device is to mutate a pattern into another pattern. And let's see exactly what they really truly are doing just so we can make sense of what these knobs are and hopefully know how we make the best dial them in to get a better result. Um, so. I'm going to deal with this like I do, say, if I'm beta testing a product. And believe it or not, one of the first things I tend to do when I beta test a product is I actually go and look at the remotes. The remotes actually tell me a lot of information about a device itself. So I'm just going to save the remote file. So that was, sorry, if you've never got yourself a remote before, obviously click on your whatever device it happens to be. Make sure you click on the MIDI focus under file. You've got your export remote device info. Click OK. I'm going to get a prompt now because I've already saved it once. There we go. So I'm going to say yes this time. And I need to now go and open that file up. So it's opened up on a different screen. Let's go and grab it. And here we are. And hang on, let me just resize it. If not, I don't think it's going to fit on the screen. Is it? Yes, it's fitted on the screen. We're very lucky. Now I find remote info. Um, especially on sort of beta products because we don't have any documentation. It does give me a little bit more information, especially when they're paneled controls because you can get to see it all, all in a nice long list. Um, in fact, the remotes on this, is that all it is? It's very, very short. There's really nothing to it. Um, but I just glancing through, I can glean things. And the first thing I've gleaned, which I didn't realize, and I mean, it makes perfect sense when I look at this device, is obviously rate, shuffle, length, and gate length so each pattern has its own rate shuffle and length and gate length so that's per pattern that makes perfect sense i suppose but i just didn't realize looking at this setup that's how it really was set up um i saw some remotes at the bottom which took my fancy here we go so this is going to be the mutation amount swap density note pattern selects so i'm like yeah we can select the patterns that's great um here we've got the run. So we've got a run here, rest, delete, tie. Yep, yep, yep. And we've got an on off button. Interesting ones, interesting ones, interesting one. So if you notice, we've got something called mutation rate, a mutation shuffle, a mutation length, and a mutation gate. But yet there's no controls for them. So this is something I could probably map out and uh, on the old nectars, or you can do it on your own keyboard, obviously. And I can have a quick gander and see what are they really doing? Because I can't gather from what they are. I mean, let's be honest, pattern length, mutation length, it's got exactly the same values. So they are tying up. And I'm assuming whatever the rate can do, that can do. So it looks like it's one for one. We've got a pattern recording length as well. Okay, so you've got a pattern recording length, then you save it into the pattern, which is going to save the length. All right, yeah, yeah. So I reckon that's probably doubling up. Um, top MIDI transpose. We've got a manual transpose. So probably I'd say you could probably transpose this by, say, an octave. And then by using your keyboard, you can obviously um, transpose it in between them octaves or something. Uh, a MIDI velocity. But over here, we says scale. I'm assuming this is the MIDI velocity. Let's hover the mouse. Yeah, this is the MIDI velocity scale. Okay, that sounds interesting. So the fact it's telling me scale, I reckon if I got a pattern, it'd be interesting to see if it works against the mutated pattern as well. If I play the keyboard really quiet or input a note really quietly, you'd hope that maybe that whole pattern would go uh, scale the velocity down for the whole pattern. And if I was to hit the note really, really hard for it to scale right up. Okay, it could be a slightly different. And we've got our playback mode, which I think is this here. See, some things aren't always obvious. Yeah, playback mode. So the big thing I've noticed 
just by whizzing through this, uh, which is missing, is obviously the mutate button. Um, well, that's so key, and I'm really am surprised that's not there. So maybe I'm missing something else. Let's have a quick whiz round to the back, see what's going on at the back of this device. Okay, control the gate length thin. Obviously, we've got some uh, box there, the CV gating note out, and it's telling you it's going to be sending out monophonic, and it's going to have a high note priority, so the high notes are going to have more priority. It's also going to send out tight and accent data. We've got random CV out. Hmm. Random CV out. I wonder if that's um, going to be random per gate, so whenever it hits a gate, it's going to hit a bit of random data out. Be interesting one to look at. Oh, and if you haven't, obviously don't know, obviously it's by Robotic Bean, and... Yeah, I think they're a great dev. So without a doubt, I would say there's probably a good manual for this, knowing that dev. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, what I'm actually gonna do now, which I can cut the video for, <laughs> makes it nice and easy. I'm actually gonna go and map out my Nectar um, so I can have them little extra controls and I can have a little bit of a play around with them and see what happens there. So I'm just gonna go and do that and then I'll be straight back. Okay, very, very quickly, due to my lighting, um, it, you can't really see the screen. Everything is a little bit blurry. Um, I've done my usual kind of mapping where we can obviously scroll down the different screens. However, usually I use these as quick keys. I haven't on this particular device. For the simple reason is there were so many toggle buttons um, on. There's so many little toggle buttons all over the place. It just made sense for me to make use of these buttons along the bottom. So the first one will actually toggle between the pattern and the listen and the mutation. So we're sort of switching between them. Then I simply went into the run button, rest, tie, delete. And then uh, at the top we have that uh, transpose and the velocity. And I can switch the device totally on or off if I want to. And then obviously via the normal kind of sort of menus at the top, as you'll expect, the first page I actually mapped out was to control all of these. So it's such a shame we haven't got that new tape, but um, I think that is such an important mapping which is missing. Um, and then the rest of the parts, um, I've actually mapped it because we can control rate, shuffle, length, that. One page does pattern one, two, another page does three and four, another page five and six, seven and eight. So it's, it's a very small map in. Um, and the very last one is is uh, the very very last one was them um, maps uh, what I said you couldn't see before was to do with the mutation of the rate shuffle length gate don't forget even though it's the last page on the mapping because my mapping scroll around I can go straight from page one straight to the last page so it's right next to each other if you need it I just thought I'd just quickly mention it as I said I was talking about mappings right let's get down to the nitty-gritty now because I really want to concentrate on these buttons so let's have a quick look and see what we're going to do. I've got myself um, sequences at the top, which of course are uh, very interesting. If you, if you haven't realized, what it been, obviously made sequences as well. As, uh, as I said, pattern mutator. So the reason I'm putting some patterns into sequences and I'm then going to record these patterns into pattern mutator is I've got myself a reference. I can see exactly what I had to start with. And you know, with this particular pattern, I'm using uh, polyphonic notes. Um, I've got different length notes uh, and quite evenly spaced out. And that's gonna give me quite a good feel of what each of these are going to do. I've also got some more basic <laughs> uh, patterns, which obviously, again, there's polyphonic, different length notes all over the place. This is gonna obviously tell me a lot more of maybe how the density and the, the note length might be working. It's not gonna probably help with this, the swap, but it might do. So I don't know if it's gonna swap these individually or is it going to look at this as one complete set. Just in case it did look at it as one complete set, I thought, right, in fact, if I scroll down, oh, there we go, we've got one more note. So just in case it did have that swap as one complete set by having um, like two lots of very full notes, it can only swap these two around from left to right, and that is it. But it's gonna tell us exactly what the swap is doing. That's the whole point of it. And I've got another pattern here where, and if I scroll down, because it's just the way it likes to do it, scrolling, there we go, we've got one long note. So we've got start of notes which are ending, 
And then obviously we've got some overlapping notes. So I've deliberately made overlapping notes. So they look, you know, they are meant to be basic, but the point is I've got these. I can now quite simply grab this, obviously hit my record here, make sure these, these are always back to zero to whatever. This is just a straightforward 32 bar. And I'm going to click start. I just wanted to point out as part of my setup is once I'd actually recorded each of my patterns to each pattern within pattern mutator, I then played the original pattern back out and recorded it into another sequence just to make sure everything was recorded as it should have been per the patterns which we were inputting. And of course, they do all match up. So I know that my input patterns are 100% inside pattern mutator. So I now know when I start looking at results, I am looking at correct results. Just thought I'd mention that. Right, we just have a quick look at here at one of the velocity um, results. Um, I didn't think I was gonna see anything special about the velocity, but as you can see, because I had this at 100%, it really was banging the velocities up to 100%. And it seems to be that there's a minimum of around about 25%. So it's not going below 25, but it did whack these right up to 100%. I wasn't too sure if this 100% was just gonna make this more random, but it does seem uh, this velocity value is more of an offset of really what's actually happening to the randomization process. But apart from that, yeah, velocity is doing exactly what we expected it to do and the same kind of results through um, across all my different patterns. So it's not really worth looking at those. The note length results were quite an interesting result. There's doing what I expected to do to start with when I was looking at my kind of sort of simple patterns in the way they were, yes, they wouldn't overlap the notes which were in different steps um, and shorten down. It might be better if we actually look at some of the other results. So this was obviously a, uh, oh, I need to scroll up a bit. Yeah, so we've got several notes. A lot of the time, these 1 16th, well, I should say that 1 16th note at the top, it, it never went obviously shorter than the 1 16th, but it didn't grow that much either. So it dealt with these. What I'm trying to say is if it lengthened the notes, they all lengthened. If it shortened them, they all tend to shorten, um, apart from maybe the top, close to the top. Um, this particular pattern here, which we got going through, sorry, no, that was my side by side. So that proved that the notes never overlapped and never went past this particular step. But as you can see, these were originally both the same size, these steps. These, these were duplicate of one to the other, obviously just slightly shifted up. Um, and as you can see, it actually has grown that a little bit, but it didn't seem to grow that. So that is a 1 16th note. It never went more than, you know, 2 1 16 um, Whereas other things did sort of either extend or shrink down. And as you can see in this one, this was obviously the same length, these bottom notes, and they've shrunk right back. But I found this pattern to be a very interesting kind of pattern. So it is definitely looking at where the notes fit on the step, depending on what it's going to do. So it shortened all these notes down. There's the original pattern here. Um, it's made this note slightly longer. And this one is actually kept the same on this one. Um, I actually done a couple of copies because you can see, again, this time um, it hasn't really done much at all with this particular um, I'm going to refer to it as a step because they all fall in the same step, These this set of notes. Um, this time it's shortened that note down and again it's sort of increased that one and I think it was this one here which was a very bizarre one. So whereas before these notes weren't overlapping anything which was in the new step, well maybe because they were already overlapped that one, it's kind of broken that rule and it, as you can see it's really extended this one out. Um, it's grown this one to a certain length, but seemed to have stopped where that step is. And these ones haven't gone past where this original step was. So there's, there seems to be some kind of funny rule. I'm probably have to run this test quite a few more times to see if we can start to get these two poke over because the original overlap, or it might be that it's been clever enough to say these two notes were already overlapping this step. We can move them forward. Um, this note here at the bottom is overlapping this step, um, so we can move that one forward, and you know, hence this one's now blocked by that step because it is never up to that step, and vice versa. And same with these, 
and, and all of these actually, I'd say all four of these would never probably go past this point here um, because that's where that step is. But yeah, so it's interesting how obviously it's decided mainly to do with the groups. Um, it's either going to lengthen all the notes or shorten all the notes. It doesn't look at each note independently and do a length on them. I suppose that's sort of one of the things I thought it may have done, um, but the mutation does not do that. It's, it's, it's looking at them as set and it's either growing them or shortening them. Um, and as I say, they are looking, it looks like it's a per step kind of analysis of looking at what data we've got and then obviously depending on what we've got up here. Um, in, this, in this particular case, obviously it's the note length, what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, so a semi-interesting set of results, interesting to me. Um, it sort of gives me ideas or maybe how I might do patterns and what we might do with them in the future. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, in these results, we're looking at the octave and the pitch. I did just have it on octave, and as you expect, things did move um, octave. And then I'll put it onto the octave and pitch to see what we're moving pitch-wise. Um, one interesting thing I've noticed um, about the octave and the octave pitch is it definitely seems to be weighted in uh, a higher pitch um, random value rather than a lower. So my final, even though I had all my test patterns, this was an easy way of just testing this, which was to, um, I just put one step. So I put one key in, which happened to be C2. So the C2, and then it allowed me to hit record on this and just keep hitting mutate, mutate, mutate. And we had one octave down. So we had no pitches sort of going down. I have seen some pitches going down. I saw that in another one of my tests. So I know it is possible, but, and I mean, this didn't run this many times, this run like probably six times the amount of time and I was just hitting it as much as I could. Um, so we've got a lot of duplications. Um, it is all, it's quite a random where it's going. It does seem to be all over the place. Interestingly, when I was looking at some of my other patterns, when I was recording results of my other patterns, which were going up and down, I noticed the, the, the pitch seemed to be more closer in a lot of cases. It was either... Um, seven or eight semitones above the, the original value. Um, I did have one, as I say, I'm sure came down by five, uh, I wasn't over this one here, might have been another one I was looking at, um, five semitones, maybe it was this note here. Um, but yeah, again, if you think about it, this was around, but this is probably playing around about the right um, pattern here, exactly along the C3 line. And as you can see, again, not a lot's come down, but more is definitely been um, weighted upwards. So it's a bit weighted into the higher pitches. I don't know if it's looking at your actual note and trying to work out if it's best to go higher or lower, you know, because actually at C3, that's, that is bang in the middle, really, of the uh, in the digital world. Um, so I don't know. Um, it just might be randomized. It's going for a higher pitch. Um, I'm now going to move on to the, the swap and density. I know I've jumped from the note length up to octaves. I know these three in my own heads, I've said before, I could do these with CV. I know what I'm expecting. I know what I'm looking at. Now I'm, I'm coming into the interesting world. This is the world which I'm, I'm quite interested in on what these two are really up to. Swap, I think I know basically what's going to go on, but it'd be interesting to see what's going to happen. But the density one, that's the one which uh, intrigues me the most. So let's move on to those. So this is the results of looking at the swaps. Um, without a doubt, there's what I refer to as multiple swaps going on. Um, so if we say, look at this particular pattern, because it's quite an easy one to look at, it looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of a T and we've sort of dropped ourselves a note down. Um, I would say that note down, and if you then follow, say, along this line here, we could say, well, no, nope, that one's been left because I can see it. That one's there, this one's disappeared. Um, and we've got a little bit of swapping going on the end. So there's a good chance for, as I say, if you look, we've got this note over here as well. So without a doubt, I think these have been swapped with one of these. I wouldn't like to say exactly which order it's happened in, but this bunch here has come over and then he's taken this note, obviously, um, in fact, I, I don't think it is this three, because let's see, it's like even, I get myself confused, even look at these two. 
So here we've got a three, which is definitely swapped, say, with the N2. So we can, we can see that as a shape. That's there. I do believe that this is swapped into this row here, and it takes the attribute, it seems to be the bottom note, um, uh, in which case the bottom note would have been this very top one. <laughs> so this is where I get myself confused. So it seems to take that as the, the length. So it then takes these three and it's put it here as that length. But I believe then it's then, then it would have put that one over here, which is then swapped with this one up here. This one's then taken the attributes and the length of this bottom note here. And yeah, I know it's all getting confusing, but if you stir it in long enough, you can sort of make sense of, as I say, there's definitely doubles or even triple swaps going on by the looks of it. Um, by the way, one moves to one, one moves to the other, and I say it's taking the attributes, and it seems to be of the lowest note, it seems to take the attributes of. Um, so in this case, I say that would have been the lowest note, it's, it's, and that's why then three, I like that. But that longer one, I say has definitely come from over here. That's the only other high note which is missing on that particular line. And then obviously that one's come in as a single, but we've, we've probably removed that single over because this triple's come over here. Oh, we got it somewhere down the line. And obviously the same moved over here as well. So the same, you know, it's, the swapping is quite complex in what it's doing. So if we actually have a look at an easier pattern, and this was a very, very funny result. I, I don't know why, in my head, I really expected, this was at 100% swap as well, I was running this at, I was really expecting this to, to fit in this sort of gap here, but no, because there isn't a single note, I suppose it's saying to itself there's absolutely nothing to swap itself with, which at the same time makes perfect logical sense. There's no notes here to swap it with. It's going to stay there. I don't know why I expect I was looking at this as sort of a pattern based as and more is measures and, and saying, okay, we're going to take this segment and swap it with this segment, but it's not. There was nothing in there, so it didn't do anything at all. Um, even at 1% uh, swap, it swapped these two patterns around. <laughs> There's only two patterns, so at one percent it decided, yep, I'm gonna swap it around. Obviously, 100 percent it would decide to swap it around. Again, I thought that was an interesting result. There was obviously the only the two patterns, and that's what it could do. And this is a very interesting one. Um I did run this several times uh, before I actually got this shape up, and this is you can see what's happened really. So that bit swapped with that note, that note swapped with that note, that note is, is, is now swapped with this group of notes, which is obviously gone over there, and made its length the same as that one. Oh, I got there in the end. So yeah, the swapping mechanism is is uh, it's doing a couple of things. Um, and I suppose it's trying to logically say, well, if I'm swapping two notes around, obviously this note may have been this size, so I've got to squeeze whatever the hell big this is into that size, so it's got to squash down. and let's pad whatever like in this case let's pad that out to what was being taken up so yeah it's it's doing a few little funny things yeah i'm not going to say i've 100 percent getting my head around it i think i really do understand quite a lot's going on um how i can use this one though to my advantage i do not know yet there's still an unknown so let's move on to the next one, which would be the density, which I think is going to be a very interesting one indeed. So this is a result of a light density. Um, it started to do partly what I thought it might do, which is sort of start squashing notes together and trying to fill the gaps in. But it's also definitely like moved notes. So it's moved, obviously, this, this step over to this side. And yeah, it has squashed some things down. So it's sort of truncated that off a bit. And you can start to look at it and think, okay, I can sort of get my head around roughly what it's doing. It's doing a couple of weird things like, where has that step come from? I mean, uh, is it the fact that it nicked one from again from over here and it's sort of doing a little bit of a swap? So I thought, okay, let's actually have a look at a simple pattern. And the simple pattern actually blew my mind even more, as in this is the simple pattern, which I then put quite a bit of density through. And you can see, well, actually, you can you can see the, the original, yeah, it's using the right notes, but it really has chopped them up, which is something I expected density to do, but it really has moved them around as well. So it's not just doing a chopping, um, it really has moved things about. And again, if we go on, say, to our next pattern, which was these two, 
you can see it even more into meme called the way it's doing its chopping the way it really is doing its shifting um and finally i this is a quite a confusing one really when you think about it this was the original pattern and this is what it it's decided to sort of came up with with one of its random processes and then uh, I, was, I was hitting it a few more times and i hit onto this pattern as well which is this which is all sort of truncated up and it's so that density setting is, is a very, very confusing setting on, on the way how it's manipulating things. Um, one thing I would say just by glancing at this, um, density without a doubt with very, very long notes is doing a real good job of, of giving some kind of real kind of randomization, really doing something quite fantastic um, compared to if it's got shorter notes and what it's doing with shorter notes. But as I say, when you get onto, you know, some of these patterns are quite weird from where you, we've started to what we've got. Um, so, yeah, that is now starting to become much more intriguing. So, yeah, I can see density is definitely going to be a handy one for longer notes. Um, the swap, well, the swap is doing roughly what we thought, but now we've got density and the swap. So using them in conjunction with each other, I think that's going to be really getting some sort of freaky kind of patterns out um and again let's have another let's actually take this one step further um i'm i'm curious and what i've done uh, um let's see where are we here i've actually taken a drum pattern and on this particular drum pattern if i have a look at my conditions uh i've got some conditions going so this is like a a little bit of a snare thing at the end. In fact, let's actually go ahead and listen to this. Um, I said my dogs will shut up long enough. So let's grab that down and see if we can bung that onto something. So if we play this. Okay, and then it's going to go through and then it's going to do a bit of a snare roll at the very, very end. So what I did was I've taken that and I've actually put it into the pattern mutator. I think that's on pattern number five. Um, however, I put the length to 96. So obviously I left this running for three times round. So it done its three loops. So it done its three lots of conditions. So it's got all its data in there. So if we, again, if we turn this one off and this one off, we'll be able to hear just that on its own. He says. Now, obviously, this mutation has probably taken place. So let's actually move some other things down, swap some things around. It'd be interesting to see what happens here. Note length. I'm not going to mess around with note length too much because this is drums. There's, there's no real point. Lot of T might be one. Again, I'm, I'm probably not going to play too much of that and this time around. Um, Velocity makes a lot more sense when we're playing with hi-hats and things, I think, personally. An octave is going to be a weird one to apply. Because now we're going to be having patterns all over the place. So if I was to... Oh, I don't know what this is, so let's clear this out. Hit record. And I just quieten you up for a second. And as you can see, we've, we've got a lot going on a lot higher up, which is starting to go out of range, obviously, from the eight pads. And we've got stuff going down. So uh, ideally, I suppose what we need to do is um, find a drum machine <laughs> for starters, I think, which will cover a, a much bigger span than what this is actually covering. And interesting and the other thing i would say we should do is ground this so at the moment um this is the pattern so uh it'd be probably quicker just to do a new pattern i would i either do something as simple as that so we're gonna always have a kick going um so no matter how we're mutating it at least we've got 
we've got something that might ground us. All over the place, aren't we? Ah, oh, we've got we've got this is running, this is running. We've got multiple things running. But this is going to give us a little bit more of a. You see, it, it not don't it anywhere. But so at least with this, it's getting a little bit more usable. So if you ground it this starts to become a little bit more usable. And I'd say, I expect if we uh, go for something a little bit different. I would also, whoops, let me turn it off. If I swap these two around, Obviously, I've now encoded the, the, the drum and the snare actually into this one pattern. Stop everything. Oh, it's in a terrible state, isn't it? <laughs> Let's just try this once more and see if we can get something semi-decent recorded. Might not. Is it because I did up the length on this one? Maybe I shouldn't have up the length on that one. Maybe that's what's causing me a, a lot of problems. But this is it. We've got to do experimentations for this to work. We, we don't know how this is. Well, I don't know how this is going to work out. I've never played with this before. So we're, we're all doing this together. So I am going to record this once more. That looks a lot better, so I can see my boomch, boomch, boomch. So I've got something grounded in there. We've got a lot of other stuff sort of going on, up and down. And what I think we could probably do with is actually having a bigger kit. And the biggest kit I think I've got, and uh, yes, I don't know my drums too well. So let's grab a... So let's grab something like a battery down, I think, and let's take that off uh, record mode for the moment. And where's that going to open up? Have we opened up somewhere and I can't see it? Oh, it's opened up over here. Totally different uh, screen. Oh dear. I don't know any of these kits. Um, they don't really make much sense to me. What's this? Electro. Could be something interesting. You know something. We're not at the end of the world there, are we, with something like that? So I've been playing around a little bit. And... Uh, I, I sort of captured this. Which wasn't too bad, really. And it's quite interesting when I lay this back over the top. In fact, what we've got to do is obviously start it from the transport bar. And I might just uh, turn this one off here. So the whole point of these devices really is, oh, thank you. Are they going to make you creative or not? So let's see 
if we can, I don't know, let's just throw something else together, shall we? I think that's what we need to do. Um, let's try and go for a different instrument or something. Yeah, let's grab one of these. This will do for the moment. Let's go and grab ourselves the player then. And what I'm actually going to do is let's grab a sequence and put that on the top. And let's see what we got. Something quite loud. So I'm going to record something into this. I don't know what I'm going to record into this. Let's keep it nice and simple because we're going to... What have we got there? So... That will do. And because of the way the mutator's working, I'm going to just take this and duplicate this. What have I got? Have I got it all? Hopefully I've got it all. Yeah, I've got all the notes. So if I hold down my alt key, he says, and we can drag everything over to this side. Um, I lost where I was. I was there, wasn't I? So I'm looking at multiple screens again, and it just gets a little bit confusing. And did I miss out a note? Did I not have a very first note? I seem to be missing a note. Oh, there's one. I didn't bring it across over here, did I? Okay, no problem. I'll just write that one in. So what have we got? We got... So I suppose um, we could step record that, I suppose. Uh, can we do that without well, step record? Um, make sure we're back at zero. Sounds good, I think. So if we now turn that off, we should be able to hear this, I suppose. I'm going to use an old trick here what I like to do um, and I sort of touched on this with when I was using compulsion I usually do this with compulsion so I'm going to put this to step in a pattern we're going to want one in there so this is now going to be just putting out the bass note only obviously we can hold that note depending on how frequently it's changing it's just going to slow it down as a tad
just zoom and grab something a bit more basic. And I'm going to cut the notes down even more. So I'm just experimenting and playing around. This is what this is all meant to be about, is just being like creative, trying to work things out. Could we use this to make something creative with? Yeah, well, the point of these devices is not always necessarily to make the actual music for you, but it might inspire you enough and you might hear something and go, actually, I could use that and I could do something with that and, and go with it.
driving all the patterns now. Patterns were randomised and mutated. interested in it. 